In the alternate world of Ultimate Marvel, Peter Parker became Spider-Man, just like his 616 counterpart. Rising up as a successful hero and fighting many alternate versions of the original's villains, Peter became a well-known and popular hero in this world. This was all tragically cut short one day when Norman Osborn gathered the Sinister Six, and together they assaulted the Parker home. Though Spider-Man bravely defeated the bad guys, he was already badly injured by a gunshot wound. The battle with Norman and this wound took their toll on the young hero, who apparently mortally wounded Norman Osborn, but in the process, Peter died surrounded by friends and family. The brutal event also outed Peter as Spider-Man, leading the entire city of New York into mourning his passing. Miles Morales was once a young and ordinary boy living in Brooklyn, who survived the events of Ultimatum with his family unscathed and returned to New York upon its reconstruction. One day, before Peter's death, a man named Dr. Marcus was recreating the spider species that first led to the creation of Spider-Man, under orders from Norman himself. When Osborne was outed as the Green Goblin, the experiment was shut down, and a mercenary named the Prowler broke into the facility and stole the Oz formula, unknowingly taking a spider with him. When Miles later visited his uncle, who is secretly the Prowler, he is bitten by the spider and passes out. The boy later wakes up and is confronted by his father, angry at the boy for visiting his shady uncle without permission. Miles panics and runs away from his dad. In the city street, the new Spider-Man first discovers his powers when he turns himself invisible. Shocked at this discovery, Miles rushes to tell his friend Genki about his new powers. Upon doing some research, Genki discovers how Peter became Spider-Man and informs Miles that the young and soon-to-be hero may have just gone through the same thing. Tentatively, Miles makes his first attempt at wall crawling, only to learn, somewhat disappointingly, that this is indeed the case. The boy would soon complete his first act of heroism by saving a young girl from a burning building, but the event proves traumatic and shocking for Miles, who gets sick at the thought of risking his own life and claims that being a hero is just not for him, abandoning any notion of becoming another Spider-Man. Later at gym class, Miles learns that Spider-Man has just been shot, Distraught over the news, Miles goes to the Parker's home as soon as he can, where he watches Peter die in Mary James' arms from a distance. Miles blames himself for the event, knowing that if he had been brave, he could have helped Peter instead of just doing nothing. Morales attends Parker's funeral, where he has a brief conversation with Gwen Stacy. The young girl teaches Miles the lesson Peter took with him Throughout his entire career as Spider-Man, with great power comes great responsibility. Taking this lesson to heart, Miles buys a costume nearly identical to the original Spider-Man, but he quickly realizes the costume was in bad taste as it makes the general public feel uncomfortable given the recent traumatic and public death of Peter. He is soon confronted by Parker's clone, Jessica Drew, who now works as an agent for the government. She takes Miles to meet Nick Fury at the Triskelon, home base of this world's equivalent of the Avengers, known as the Ultimates. This meeting is cut short when Electro attacks the facility, and after the young hero helps defeat the villain, Peter's clone presents Miles with a new and unique costume the boy can use as a new Spider-Man. Now dressed for the part, Miles begins his life as Spider-Man, catching the eye of various individuals, including the Prowler, and J. Jonah Jameson. Miles' uncle, Aaron Davis, also known as the Prowler, begins to piece together that the new Spider-Man must be Miles after a violent confrontation with the Tinkerer. Aaron confronts Miles about this news, which makes the boy uncomfortable despite his uncle's apparently friendly attitude about his change in his nephew. Sure enough, it does not take long for Aaron to blackmail Miles into helping his uncle. With the Prowler using a new set of stolen vulture wings, the two take down a gang leader known as the Scorpion. 
But the dangerous nature of this conflict leads Miles into refusing to help his uncle any further. Aaron does not take this well, and the two end up in a brutal fright with one another. The Prowler is accidentally killed in an explosion as a result of this, and as he laid dying in front of Miles, Aaron declares that his nephew is just like him. With the news of the new Spider-Man being a potential murderer, and haunted by the death of his uncle, Miles is devastated. He then gets a phone call and is asked to meet the caller at a warehouse. After an encounter with Batrock the Leaper on the way to the meeting, Miles arrives and is greeted by Aunt May and Gwen Stacy. Knowing he can trust them, Miles unmasks himself in front of the two women. Before they can really talk, the meeting is interrupted by Captain America. Having seen what happened to the Prowler, Steve Rogers feels that Miles is not ready to be a superhero and wants him to stop before more people are hurt or killed. Mary Jane then arrives, invited by Gwen Stacy. MJ points out that Captain America is just acting out of guilt for his behavior with Peter Parker. Rogers is undeterred by MJ's words and threatens to put Miles in jail if the boy doesn't listen to his direct orders. He then gets a call about an emergency and is forced to leave. But Aunt May is not dissuaded by this. She understands what Peter went through and that there will be no stopping Miles. Instead, Peter's guardian gives Miles the original Spider-Man's web shooters, giving the boy her blessing to operate as the new Spider-Man. With his new webbing, Miles helps Captain America defeat the Rhino, and Steve begrudgingly accepts Miles' decision to continue his role as a superhero, though he comments that the boy needs training. Later, police detective Maria Hill is assigned to investigate the death of Aaron Davis. She meets and interviews Miles and his family. Though she doesn't find anything, it is clear that Hill views Miles as a suspect, or at the very least a person of interest in this case. It is during this time that the ultimate version of Reed Richards, corrupted and broken by past events, orchestrates a devastating attack on the Earth. With the world sliding into chaos around him, and America no longer a unified country, Miles confronts Captain America, accepting the need for his training and wanting to join the Ultimates. Steve is furious, as this is the wrong time for Miles to be knocking on the door of S.H.I.E.L.D. in the middle of a national disaster but the argument is cut short with an attack by Hydra. Miles saves the captain's life after he nearly falls off the Triskelon, and together they are able to stop the attack. Steve takes back everything he said about Miles, and together, the Ultimates welcome the teenager onto the team. Miles is present at the inauguration of President Steve Rogers, and plays an important role in helping to restore order to America. With the whole US situation eventually being sorted out, Miles' life as Spider-Man eventually resumes and he is returned home. One day, Miles has a truly unexpected encounter. In the mainstream Marvel 616 universe, Peter Parker has a battle with Mysterio. The fight ended when the villain unwittingly transported Peter to the Ultimate Universe. There, Peter is surprised to find that his identity is common knowledge. And as Peter tries to return home and get to the bottom of all this, he finds a surprising presence on a nearby rooftop. Which is how Spider-Man met Spider-Man. The two immediately get into a fight and manage to unmask one another, but Peter is knocked unconscious after Miles uses his Venom Stinger on the other Spider-Man. Peter wakes up in government custody, where he is interrogated by a very suspicious ultimate version of Nick Fury. Peter explains the situation, and Fury, recognizing the threat of a dimensional rift, sends both Spider-Men to investigate. As they board the helicopter, it is shot down by Mysterio, surprised but pleased at the notion of getting two Spider-Men for the price of one. The two survive the explosion and confront Mysterio, who unleashes a series of illusions on them. Surprised that the illusions are somehow able to assume physical form, Miles is able to evade them and knock Mysterio down, only to find it is yet another trick. The illusion is a trap, and Miles is knocked unconscious. The younger Spider-Man is later woken up by the Ultimates, who are investigating the scene. Peter is left, as he doesn't know any of the Ultimate characters, and if they are real, or if they can be trusted. Parker learns what happened to the Ultimate version of himself, and is devastated. 
at the Parker home, the ultimate versions of Aunt May and Gwen Stacy are setting about on a typical day, when they are shocked to see a man dressed as Spider-Man on their front lawn. Insulted, Gwen threatens to call the police, until Peter unmasks himself with tears in his eyes. The young girl assumes this is all some sick joke and attacks Peter. Miles arrives and together, the Spider-Men explain what is going on. Peter apologizes and says this was a huge mistake to come here. He didn't want to cause these people any grief. In response to all of this, Aunt May faints. Inside, Peter and his alternate family have a touching discussion of their respective lives and why Peter chooses to be Spider-Man, until they are called in by Nick Fury. Peter asks that Miles comes with him, appreciating his help, and as he leaves, he has a wordless encounter with the ultimate Mary Jane, who runs away in tears at the sight of Parker. Teaming up with Miles and the Ultimates, Peter is able to defeat Mysterio, and the Ultimates were able to use the villain's portal to return Spider-Man home. As he leaves, Peter offers some sage advice to Miles, giving the young boy his blessing to continue operating as Spider-Man in this world. Miles is left speechless at this, and Nick Fury tells him that the boy has earned this, and now he's going to have to keep earning it. Back at home, Peter thinks on this encounter. He decides to look Miles up on Google, and though we do not know what he finds, the information does shock him. Miles and his identity as Spider-Man is nearly discovered by Betty Brandt, who puts together the familiar connection between the Prowler and Spider-Man. However, she mistakenly thinks that Miles' father, Jefferson, is the new Spider-Man, rather than Miles. She brings her story to J. Jonah Jameson, but the editor has changed a lot since he first encountered the ultimate Peter Parker. The old Spider-Man saved the journalist's lives many times, and Jameson now views Peter as his greatest hero and inspiration. The reporter refuses to publish the story, saying it will only ruin a good man and his family, and likely result in the city being deprived of yet another superhero. Brandt quits in response to this, and attempts to get her story published with another news source. Though she is almost successful, the young woman is brutally killed by Venom, who is currently a host to rocks and scientist Dr. Conrad Marcus, the same man who created the spider that bit Miles. The new Venom confronts Jefferson, also assuming he is the new Spider-Man, but Miles comes to his father's rescue. Spider-Man is nearly killed by the symbiote, who is able to grab the young hero and attempts to strangle the boy, until Jefferson throws some debris at the monster. In response, Venom throws Jefferson into a cab, and Miles' father is badly injured as a result of this. When Morales uses his stingers, the symbiote falls apart and escapes to the sewers, while the boy's father is taken to the hospital. Miles and Genki are visited by Gwen Stacy and Mary Jane, who explain the origins of the symbiotes in the Ultimate Universe. Their meeting is cut short when Maria Hill arrives. Hill doesn't buy for a second that Gwen and MJ just happen to be visiting, and she tells the teenagers about Betty Brant's death. Knowing that it is impossible that two former contacts of Peter Parker just happen to be visiting Miles while all this is happening, Maria all but confirms she now knows exactly who Miles is. The detective explains that she can't do anything until Miles comes to her with concrete information. Though the boy doesn't tell her anything, he is clearly moved by the detective's words. Meanwhile, Venom has been surviving in the sewers by dragging unsuspecting citizens down and feeding off of them. And now restored, he begins an assault on the hospital that Jefferson is currently being housed in. Upon hearing this news, Maria tells Miles to go help his father, knowing the boy can get there faster than the cops. As Venom storms the hospital, Miles arrives and begins to hit Venom with his electrical stingers. But the symbiote has learned to adapt to these and quickly recovers, slamming Miles into a hospital bed. Venom says that lately, he just hasn't been thinking clearly, and should have realized that the new Spider-Man is a boy. Though before he can do anything with Miles, Spider-Man's mom, Ryo, who has been watching this fight unfold, unloads a clip into the villain's head. This does little to slow down Venom, 
who begins to absorb Miles into his monstrous body. With Spider-Man now contained within Venom, Miles' mother begs the villain to let her son go, revealing that she knows exactly who Miles really is. Using his stingers, Miles is able to explode the symbiote from within, just as the police arrive. The cops kill Dr. Marcus, and even manage to do tremendous damage to the suit, but Miles is not able to celebrate. Rio has been shot, and though Miles calls for help, she has been mortally wounded. His mother states that she is proud of her son and what he can do. She tells him that Miles can't ever let his father know that he is Spider-Man, and with these last words, Rio dies in her son's arms. Furious at himself and devastated at the death of his own mother, Miles later tears his costume to pieces, declaring himself Spider-Man no more. For the next year of his life, Miles becomes completely inactive as a superhero. He's also started to date a girl named Kate Bishop. Peter's clone, Jessica Drew, comes by and gives Miles a new costume made for the boy. But Miles has no interest in resuming his life as Spider-Man and leaves. Jessica does not accept this and sneaks the costume into the Morales' home. She writes him a note saying that a year is a very long time and ask the boy how many people could have been saved during this period. After an encounter with three young heroes named Cloak, Dagger, and Powerball, Jessica tracks down the origin of these three to Rocks and Industries, and convinces a reluctant Miles to go with her as Spider-Man to confront the head of this company. Teaming up with the three other heroes, they are all able to defeat the Ultimate Taskmaster and have the Roxen CEO arrested. Following this, Miles decides to once again embrace and accept his role as Spider-Man. As Jessica is debriefed by her superiors, they are upset for the agent taking matters into her own hands, but were very impressed by the improvised team she put together, seeing they see a future in this group. Miles later attended a memorial service held at the Parker residence two years after his predecessor's death where the young man reflects on his time he spent with the 616 version of Peter. When the Age of Ultron timeline was destroyed by Wolverine and Invisible Woman in the 616 universe, the entire multiverse was badly damaged, with effects on space-time that to date are still not well understood. The Ultimate Universe was strongly affected by this change, as the 616 version of Galactus appeared in the Ultimate World following the timeline collapse. The Devourer of Worlds is quickly discovered by his ultimate counterpart, and the two versions of Galactus merge into one being that is hungrier than ever. Meanwhile, Miles is being thanked amicably by a police officer, who is happy the boy is returning as Spider-Man. It is then that a massive figure appears in New York City. The Ultimate Spider-Man scrambles to assemble with the Ultimates and Captain America orders them to help get everyone to safety while Iron Man comes up with a plan. After rescuing some children, Miles rushes off to find his father. Panicked at the situation and without much of an alternative, Miles reveals his identity to his dad. Jefferson doesn't take this well and in spite of the emergency, blames Miles for the death of his mother and refuses to cooperate with the boy. The argument is interrupted when the wing of a plane nearly crashes down on them. Miles saves his father's life and orders the man to get himself to safety before leaving to help others. Spider-Man then finds J. Jonah Jameson in a crashed plane and saves the man's life. Before Miles leaves, Jameson is so grateful and moved by this act that he swears that once this is all over, he's going to change the boy's life forever. Miles returns home only to find his father is gone. Before he can go looking for him, Morales is called in by the Ultimates. Working with them and the X-Men, they are able to push Galactus out of this dimension, saving the world from his destructive hunger. But the battle is not without its costs, and the Ultimates are practically wiped out in the process. Brushed at the loss of his friends, Iron Man planned to declare the Ultimates disbanded, but having now worked together against both Roxxon and Galactus, Miles joins a new roster of Ultimates along with Jessica Drew, Cloak, Dagger, and Powerball. 
as part of the Ultimates, Miles would face various villains including Taskmaster, Crossbones, and the Serpent Skull Gang. They would also briefly work with the new iteration of the Ultimate Fantastic Four. Kitty Pride joins the team shortly after their initial crime-fighting excursion. Morales would also prove pivotal when at teaming up with the Ultimate X-Men to help the all-new X-Men return to their home universe. He was also a vital part of the Spider-Verse event, leading a team of alternate versions of Spider-Man against the sinister vampire family called the Inheritors, who were hunting Spider-Man across the multiverse. In the aftermath of the Galactus Cataclysm, Jefferson is still missing, and Miles hasn't seen his father since the event. He is enrolled in the Brooklyn Visions Academy with Genki, and is currently boarding alone. He is tempted to tell his girlfriend about his dual identity, and has a talk with Mary Jane about the benefits and danger of doing so. Uncertain what to do, Miles returns, but is shocked to discover he is not alone. The boy is surprised to find the ultimate Peter Parker, alive and well. Miles is speechless at the sight of his predecessor, who has been assumed dead for years now. Peter does not know what happened, and simply wants his web shooters back. But Miles wants an explanation, and says that if Peter doesn't tell Aunt May about his return, Morales will. When the younger Spider-Man refuses to back down, Peter knocks him out and takes his shooters with him. Thinking back on Jessica Drew's history, Miles assumes Peter is a clone, and rushes off to tell his friend Genki. As they discuss things, Kate Bishop arrives, and Miles decides that it's time to tell her that he's Spider-Man. When Kate realizes he's being serious, she runs away without saying a word. Maria Hill then arrives, and demands that Miles come with her, so Miles uses his ability to turn invisible in order to trick her into thinking he ran away too. Wondering what they wanted, he and Genki check online, only to find that Maria is trying to protect the boy. Norman Osborn is alive, and has escaped federal custody. Miles rushes to the Parker home to make sure everything is okay, but when he arrives, he sees a flame in the sky. It crashes down in front of him, and Miles realizes this is it. He's standing right where Peter died, with the Green Goblin right in front of him. Though Norman realizes this isn't Peter, he is all too happy to share with Morales the full Parker experience. Miles punches the goblin, but it only serves to light the hero's fist on fire. Thinking on his feet, he smashes Norman with a mailbox. The villain responds with a massive fiery attack. Around New York, people watch the confrontation unfold live on television or online. When Miles is nearly fried by Norman, the battle is suddenly interrupted. To the shock of everybody watching, the Ultimate Spider-Man is back, here to save the day. Norman instantly turns on Peter, furious and confused as to how the boy is still alive. When the police open fire on the goblin, the villain turns on them, slaughtering the officers. Peter uses this opportunity to pin the goblin to the ground with his webbing and Miles is able to use his stinger to knock Norman unconscious. The police instantly surround the two Spider-Man, while Aunt May, who just saw everything unfold on TV, declares with absolute certainty that her Peter Parker is back. The two heroes escape, though Miles is shot in the leg in the process. Injured and unable to get enough distance between him and the police, he is rescued by Detective Hill. The detective insists that they can't be seen with Spider-Man in the car, and he needs to take off his mask. And the boy reluctantly complies. Meanwhile, Norman manages to escape the police too, and brutally kills J. Jonah Jameson in his own apartment after Osborne unsuccessfully tries to get his story published. Maria helps treat Miles' wound, and says they need to go find Peter. While Miles has no idea where Parker could be, Hill does. They go to Mary Jane's house, and sure enough, Peter is there to greet the two. In MJ's home, he explains to Hill and Morales what little he knows. Parker has no way to verify if he is a clone or not, but he remembers everything that ever happened to him in his life, including his own death. After his alleged death, 
The next thing he remembers is waking up in an abandoned lab outside of Atlanta. With all the computers wiped and nobody present at the lab, Peter has no idea how or why he got there. Panicking, Parker returned to New York and told MJ he was alive. They went to Peter's grave and dug up the coffin, only to find it empty. Seeing the grief his return caused MJ, he chose to keep his revival a secret from the rest of his family. Aunt May and Gwen Stacy then come to MJ's home and happily hug the hero they long thought dead. But they aren't the only ones who have figured out where Peter has gone to, and Norman arrives, eager to settle the relationship between Parker and Osborne. Miles leaps into action, slamming Norman with MJ's couch and stinging the villain, temporarily incapacitating the monster. When he recovers, Peter Parker and Miles team up to once again defeat the Green Goblin. This battle is cut short when Osborne's powers suddenly appear to give out, and he looks like Norman has spontaneously died in front of them for no apparent reason. Maria, wanting to be sure of Norman's death once and for all, empties the clip of bullets into the villain and burns the corpse. Meanwhile, Kate Bishop is struggling to come to terms with the news of Spider-Man's identity. After being warned by her sister, she does not mention this to her parents, who tell her it is time for bed. As they wish her street dreams, they exchange two words with one another. Hail Hydra. Impressed by his actions, Peter gives his shooters back to Morales, and says he is leaving to figure out just what happened to him. Aunt May is upset, but he says he wants to do this to keep her out of danger. He and Mary Jane leave town together, while Miles returns to the academy, where he rests until Genki wakes Morales up with the news that he has a visitor. Jefferson has finally returned and is here to see his son. Miles' father begins to tell his son a long story to explain why he disappeared when he found out his son is Spider-Man. When Jefferson was younger, he was recruited as an undercover agent for Nick Fury, who tasked him with infiltrating the Kingpin's ranks. Though the man was forced to commit terrible atrocities to gain the crime lord's trust, he was successful in helping Fury arrest Kingpin and shut down a mutant drug cartel. Following this, Jefferson quit S.H.I.E.L.D. and met Miles' mother a week later. Though the family began a normal life after this, Jefferson was always afraid Miles would wind up with the same past as his own, which is why he reacted so badly to Miles being Spider-Man. He apologizes for the hurtful things he said to Miles, and they affirm their need for one another. Father and son make amends and agree to no more drama for at least one year. Morales begins to piece his life back together with the return of his father and, with the help of Cloak and Dagger, he takes down Sabretooth and Electro, who are fighting over a bank robbery. After catching up with his fellow heroes, he then goes to Kate's house as he has not had a chance to talk to her since he told his girlfriend about his secret identity. Miles is greeted by Kate's father, who says Kate is out, but invites him in for a glass of water. As they talk, the man suddenly asks the teenager about the origin of his superpowers, and Miles realizes all too late that this is a trap. As the drugs in the boy's water begins to take effect, Bishop reassures Miles that Kate didn't give her boyfriend up, and that she's a good girl, before declaring, Hail Hydra. It is during this time that two mercenaries begin a series of robberies of highly valuable technology across New York City. When Jessica Drew tries to catch one of them during one such theft, they overpower the clone and manage to capture the young woman. With Miles missing, Genki tries in vain to find him. Their mutual friend, a boy named Judge, comes by to return a memory stick and casually brings up the fact that having lived with the two for so long, he is well aware that Miles is Spider-Man. Panicking, Genki rushes off to tell Miles, only to find his friend's room is being searched by agents. Miles later wakes up, confined by Hydra, and is surprised to see Katie is with him. Though his girlfriend apologizes and says that her sister was the one who gave Miles and his secret away, the young hero is really not interested in an apology, and makes it clear that this pretty much qualifies as a breakup for them. 
When Miles attempts to escape from confinement, Katie's father stops the boy, showing that they have captured Miles' friends and family and will hurt them if he resists. When Miles tries to escape anyway, he is shot down by Hydra's soldiers. As Miles falls unconscious, an important figure is arriving at the facility, with Jessica Drew and an army of robots in tow. Doctor Doom has arrived. The story of Miles will continue in the pages of his own comic series, and recent press announcements by Marvel have revealed that as part of the upcoming Secret Wars Battle World event, Miles will be joining the main 616 Marvel Universe. The consequences and circumstances of this move have not yet been revealed. Having been bitten by a similar but slightly different version of the spider that gave Peter Parker his powers, Miles Morales has most of the powers and abilities of the original Spider-Man. His strength, speed, and ability to stick to walls is largely on the same level as Peter Parker. Miles also has a spider sense, but it is weaker and less specific than Peter's. Morales has two abilities that Parker does not the ability to camouflage his own body and clothes in order to turn invisible, and an electrical venom strike. The venom stings Miles can produce are strong enough to incapacitate just about any opponent, even enemies who are normally resistant to such attacks, like Electro or Giant Man. Venom has also proven vulnerable to the stinger, though it has been shown to be able to adapt and overcome this attack over time to a limited degree. Norman Osborn was also particularly vulnerable to this attack, and the villain's unusual genetic structure may have led the Venom Strike to cause fatal damage to the Goblin's physiology. Whether or not this is the case is currently ambiguous, as the exact cause and circumstance of Norman's death is not apparent at this time. Miles' body is also highly resistant to damage. He has been badly injured before, and though very painful for him, he recovers quickly from such injuries. The boy has also survived deadly attacks with no apparent damage to his own body at all. The young hero's costume was designed by Shields, and he uses Peter Parker's web shooters. Hello and welcome to Comic Island. My name is Arden. And this is my origin and bio for Miles Morales, the Ultimate Spider-Man. So yeah, this wound up being a very long and very thorough review, but hopefully you guys like it. I certainly enjoy going through Miles and his history with a little more detail than usual, and this is a pretty cool character that I really like. He feels like a brush of fresh air to the world of Spider-Man, and I'm really looking forward to his journey into the mainstream universe, as announced with the upcoming Battleworld event. From what I've heard of the subject, it is also rumored that Miles might appear in future Sony films, which is an idea I see a lot of potential in. This would be a cool and good way to set any new Spider-Man movies apart from the five that already exist, and I really just find the whole idea quite exciting. As for the whole business about having a new minority version of Spider-Man, well, uh, it's not like Peter's going anywhere. I don't really care about what color a character's skin is, nor do I care what genitalia they have. Miles can dress up like Batman, Spider-Man, or Ash Ketchum. No, what matters to me is the story and the artwork. If the comic is good, then I am good, and I could care less about race or who is behind the mask. Most of what I read that features this character I would recommend. The art and story of Ultimate Comics Spider-Man Volume 3 is enjoyable, and I on the whole liked it as a solid introduction for Miles. I also really enjoyed the Spider-Man crossover with 616 Peter, and on the whole, currently really like the ongoing series Miles Morales, The Ultimate Spider-Man. This ongoing story is fairly fun, though I don't like the comic's bad habit of relying heavily on cliffhangers issue to issue. Still, I highly recommend all these comics as they are good, clean fun. Sadly, I found both the Cataclysm event and the all-new Ultimate series to both be lacking. I find in the relatively short life of Miles Morales, these two are the only truly weak links in his story. Cataclysm suffers from just general bad storytelling, 
a rushed ending, and a lack of meaningful payoff with a character like Galactus. Though Miles does have the best story out of that entire event. On the other hand, the Ultimate series was just a mess. I like the team and the characters involved, but the whole comic suffered from lackluster writing and ridiculously inconsistent art. After reading the series for this video, I'm kinda glad it got cancelled, and I deliberately skipped over most of the story in the bio because nothing really of substance happens in the entire 12 issue run. So I definitely think you can safely skip all new ultimates and not really miss anything important. And that feels like more than enough talk about Miles for now. This was a fun origin and bio, and one of the most requested ones I've gotten so far. Let me know what kind of origins and bios you'd like to see in the future. We get a lot of requests, but one by one we are going to get these out for you guys. Otherwise, you can catch our full list of all our origins and bios on our website. We also post all our videos and other content on our Facebook and Twitter pages, so you should check those out too. We have a links to all these and more in our video description. And finally, don't forget to like, subscribe, and keep reading comics.